friends, my name is Miss Sykes and today we're going to be learning about how to edit a sentence. So we're going to be taking a sentence that I wrote and we're going to be working on editing it to make sure that it has proper capitalization, punctuation, and everything that it needs in order to be a correct and readable sentence. I'm going to ask that you work along with me today. So for this lesson you will need your ears so that you may listen and follow along, a piece of paper so you can write down your sentence, and a pencil so that you can copy and edit the sentence along with me. If you don't have all of those materials, then at the very least, please follow along, listen and pay attention so that when you're asked to do this by yourself, you are able to. First, let's take a look at our editing checklist. So the first thing on our editing checklist is capital letters. Capital letters always come at the beginning of a sentence and the names of people and places. We'll also be looking for punctuation. That means we need something at the end of our sentence to indicate that the sentence is over. We'll also be checking our spelling, our finger spaces, and last but not least, we'll be checking to see if our sentence makes sense, which is maybe the most important part of editing. So let's take a minute and first copy our sentence. Our sentence says, he didn't want to go to Miss Smith's class. Go ahead, pause this video, and then take a minute and copy that down on your paper so you're ready to edit with me. All right, got a copy? Excellent. So the first thing we're gonna check for is capital letters. I'll be marking on my screen, and I want you to mark along with me. First, let's check at the beginning of our sentence. Do we have a capital letter at the beginning of our sentence? No, we don't. So we're gonna need to change the H of he to a capital H. I'm gonna mark that with my pen with three lines underneath it. That means we need a capital letter. On the next page, I'll show you what it looks like with the capital letters put into place. We also need to check for the names of people and places. Now, let's read our sentence one more time and check for any places. He didn't want to go to Miss Smith's class. No places, but I did see a person's name, Miss Smith. So we're going to need to capitalize the name of Miss Smith as well. Now, with a name like Miss Smith, who is their teacher, we're going to need to capitalize the M of Miss and the S in Smiths, because both of those are a part of her name. Miss is a title, and we always capitalize titles as well. Smith is her last name, and so we need to capitalize that. So now that we've marked which letters need to be capitalized, let's go ahead and look at the next page where those letters will be turned into capitals. Your sentence should now look like this. If you haven't already, please erase the lowercase letters and replace them with capital letters. Next up, we'll be looking at punctuation. Remember, punctuation is, comes at the end of a sentence to indicate that the sentence is completely over. If we look at the end of our sentence, we see that there's nothing there. That means we need to add some kind of punctuation. The three most common types of punctuation are a period, a question mark, and an exclamation point. We use a question mark when we're asking a question. A question would start with a question word, like who, what, when, where, or why. Since we're not using any of those words at the beginning of our sentence, we can safely assume we don't need a question mark at the end. That leaves us with a period and an exclamation point. Now, it all depends on how we want to read the sentence. We would use an exclamation point when we want to show a lot of emotion or excitement. If we were writing a sentence about a party, we might use an exclamation point. Or if we were saying, she was so mad, then we might use an exclamation point to show that there's lots of emotion. But in this sentence, we don't hear a lot of emotion. Listen to me read the sentence and decide what you think, what kind of punctuation you think we should put at the end. He didn't want to go to Miss Smith's class. I think I would use a period here. Now you could use an exclamation point if you read the sentence differently. If we read it like this, he didn't want to go to Miss Smith's class. Then you might use an exclamation point because I'm using more emotion. I'll be using a period today, but I'll leave it up to you to make the best decision for what your sentence should look like. I'm gonna add my period by drawing it here at the end, and I'm also gonna draw a circle around it to draw attention to it. On the next page, you'll see what that looks like with it all put together. 
Now we see that we added a period at the end of our sentence. But wait, we forgot to do another one at the end of miss, so let's go back to our previous page. We added a period at the end of the sentence, but punctuation also works in the sentence as well. We also want to add a period or a dot after miss because miss, M-S, is a title and it's shortened. If we were to spell out the word miss, we would spell M-I-S-S. But that's not what we did. This sentence has it abbreviated. Abbreviated is a word that means shortened. Since it's shortened, we need to put a period at the end to indicate that it's a shortened sentence and a, or a shortened word and it's a title. So now we have two places where we've added punctuation in our sentence. It should now look like this. Take a minute to fix your sentence with all of the necessary punctuation if you haven't done it already. Let's keep going. Next up, we're going to check our spelling. Now, most of the spelling, most of the words in this sentence are either sight words or words that we can sound out. <clears throat> Let's go word by word and check to make sure they're spelled correctly. First, we have he. He is a sight word. I know that he is spelled H-E, so I know that that word is spelled correctly. But if I didn't know, I might be able to check a word wall or a dictionary or maybe ask an adult for help. Next up, we have the word didn't. Now the person that wrote this sentence looks like they spelled it out. D -i -d -i -n -t. Didn't. But we know that didn't is a contraction. That means it's two words put together. The two words that make up didn't are did and not. When you put them together, you end up with the word didn't. That means that we're not going to spell it out like that. It's going to end up looking like a contraction. I'll show you what that looks like on the next page, but for now, <clears throat> I'm just gonna underline it to show that we're gonna mark it up later. I have two other places in my sentence where I wanna check my spelling. Next we have want to. Something looks funny about that, but it's not the spelling, so we're gonna keep going. Next up is the word go. I know that go is a sight word and it's spelled G-O. Then we have to. This form of to, T-O-O, -O, means also. If I put the word also in this sentence, we can check and see if it makes sense. He didn't want to go also miss Smith's class. Hmm, that doesn't make a lot of sense. That means we might be using the wrong form of two. We could also spell it T-W-O, which means the number two, or T-O. In this case, we're going to use T-O because we're not talking about the number. I'm going to cross off my last O to remind myself that it's going to be a different form of two. Next, we have Miss Smith's. That's a person's name, so I'm going to assume that it's spelled correctly unless I have reason to believe otherwise. And last up, we have the word class. Now, this person spelled the word class, C-L-A-S. Looks like they sounded it out. But we know that when an S comes at the end of a sentence, it's usually a double letter. So we need to add an extra S here at the end to make the word class spelled correctly. Let's see what it looks like on the next page so much better. Take a minute to fix your sentence, the spelling in your sentence, if you haven't done so already. Next, we're going to check our finger spacing. Now, finger spacing is something that you see a lot more when you're writing with a pencil and paper than if you're writing on a computer, but I made sure to add in a place where we need to add a finger space as if I wrote this sentence out myself. In your sentence, I want you to check your own sentence for sp finger spacing as well. That means we want to leave at least one finger space in between each word so that we know they're different words. In our sentence, the words want and to are too close together. We need to separate them with a finger space. When we do that, we can tell that they're two separate words instead of one word mashed together. I'll be fixing that in my sentence, but I want you to check every space in your sentence to make sure that there's finger spaces between each word. It should look like this when you're all done. Last but not least, we're going to check to see if our sentence makes sense. Now, we've read this a couple of times now, and we know what it's supposed to say, but let's read it and think about if we can make sense of that sentence and if we know what it's saying. He didn't want to go to Miss Smith's class. Makes sense to me. We're talking about somebody. He doesn't have a name, but we've used the pronoun he to represent him. 
and we know that he didn't want to go to Miss Smith's class. We could certainly get more information about this sentence, but by itself it does make sense. That means our editing is all done, and we've written a complete sentence that is fixed and edited correctly. For your individual practice today, I want you to write your answer to this question. Why do you think he didn't want to go to Miss Smith's class? Now we don't have information that could answer that question as if we could look back in a text or a story, so you've got to just use your brain and think. Why would somebody not want to go to class? Maybe they had something fun going on. Maybe they didn't like the teacher because she was mean. Maybe their friend was in a different class, or maybe they just really wanted to go to lunch. Why do you think he didn't want to go to Miss Smith's class? Write your answer on your paper beneath where you edited your sentence. Let's go ahead and write our understanding of this lesson. Since we have a five star rating system here, we can kind of go one star at a time per thing that we edited. Remember we edited with capital letters, punctuation, spelling, finger spacing, and checking to see if it made sense. If you did all five of those things and you were able to do them with me or before I did them, then you might be at five stars. If you're at five stars and you could teach this lesson to somebody else, that means you know how to edit a sentence and you usually read it correctly the first time. If you maybe missed one of those things, or you got everything except punctuation, then maybe we're at four stars, and we'll continue to practice our punctuation in the future. If you got three of those things, but maybe you missed two, then we might be at three stars. Same for two stars. And last but not least, one star, which would be if you got one thing correct or if you didn't quite understand what it means to edit a sentence yet. No matter where you are, there's more we can learn and practice with our editing sentences. If you're in the one to two star range, I would suggest watching this video again, maybe pausing it in between each section and leaving comments below asking to clarify different pieces of how to edit. If you're in the three to four star range and you only have one or two things to work on with your editing, then I would suggest practicing writing a few sentences by yourself and then editing them and checking to see to make sure you've used all of your editing tools correctly. If you're at five stars, then I would suggest just practicing writing. You can go back and check to make sure you've used everything correctly, but chances are you can just extend yourself and practice writing more complex sentences with more words and more uh, usage of these editing tools. As always, great job today, guys. Rock on, superstars, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye!